This is this is going to be fun. So, hey, hello everybody. Let me know in the chat what you. Uh, are. Doug here. It looks like. Okay, Most I need to turn off my air conditioner. Hold on. <laughs> okay, I think we're live. I think it's working. We'll see what's going on here. Um, Sorry about that. Kind of getting just rushing right into this. We didn't want to wait too long after the black so magic announcement to, to get started. Doug on my he's uh, going live on his channel as well. So, so we're do uh, anyway, so welcome, together. welcome. That's we're going to be taking live questions here. I'm going to be joined uh, by Ryan Summerfield here in just one, one moment. He's getting his live stream going at the moment, and then we'll bring him in here, include him on this one as well. But uh, this is quite the marathon of announcements from Blackmagic. I, this is by far the biggest set of announcements I've ever seen from them. I've been watching them for quite a few years now, and this is the biggest, without question, of anything I've ever seen them do. So um, I think... Let's see. Let's see if Ryan's about ready for me here. Yeah, let's. Okay, let's yeah, I'm getting the thumbs up from Ryan. So, uh, let's um, bring it up. Welcome to the stream. All right, here we go. There's, there's Ryan. How's it going, Ryan? I'm well. I'm well. How are you? Doing well. Um, getting a little bit Excellent. of weirdness with the audio. I wonder if that's just my. Yeah, that's probably just my inner monitors. Okay, so I think we're probably good. Make sure. Okay, well, I'll, I'll just talk a little bit, just to make sure everyone can hear on your side. That's um, good. That's everyone good. on my side, just making sure you can hear Doug. Okay, I can't hear Doug. Apologies. Can't hear Doug. Uh, I'm sending audio. You, you can hear me, right, Ryan? Uh, I can hear you. Okay. Let me just make sure that we've we'll got... Wait till we get, get you... Uh, get, get that working on your, your stream before we move forward. But uh, love to see in the comments what you guys think about this crazy set of announcements from today. And... Ryan, you do have set up for comments for us, right? Correct. So, um, okay. All right, everyone, my stream, I think we've now got Doug coming in. Great. Check, check, check. Audio check. Beautiful. And everyone on Doug's stream, you can hear me as well. Check, check, check. Hello, hello. Seems to be. 
Um, let's see, get to... I should get to the proper YouTube dashboard so I can view comments in live in real time here. It's yep, so you got the social stream thing, so we should have both of them. Okay, my volume is a bit lower than Doug's. I will okay, bring... Okay, there we go. Yep, we got, uh, we got comments coming in. Doug's audio a little bit lower. Hey, this is what we do here. This is this is all live. <laughs> let's let's just make it up as we go. <laughs> That's right. But you, have, you, have to get, you guys have to keep in mind that Ryan got up in what one a.m. something like that in order to watch this stream. Ah, uh, so. just just before two. Yeah, yeah. It's, so, it's been a long morning. So we intentionally didn't take a lot of time to get prepped for this. Uh, just just allow him <laughs> to get some sleep, especially before he goes on the road to make it to NAB. So it's going to be great to see you there at NAB again. Uh, twice, two years in a row. <laughs> That's pretty. Likewise, pretty I am really excited. Yeah, so I'm not always, always shocked my, um... when someone from your part of the world makes it all the way over here. So yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> especially after this announcement, this is going to be quite something. Uh, I've just boosted my volume a little bit on my mic. Let me know if that's any better. Sounds good. Sounds good on this end. So um, we're, we awesome. are going to have a few sync issues with audio coming from Ryan on my end. Um, I'm using Zoom ISO on a Mac to pull in his feed and bring it into my switcher. It's fighting me today, so we're kind of lucky to have anything at all. So we're gonna we're gonna we'll deal with a little <laughs> bit of low frame rate and a little bit of delayed audio, just so we don't have to <laughs> reboot that thing one more time. But uh, anyway, that's so. a good point. Someone just said that uh, the audio in the the stream from Blackmagic was out of sync. So yes, it was. It was. You know, we're doing just as well, basically. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. So. What do you think overall, Ryan? And this is pretty, uh, pretty Gosh. exciting. It's exceptionally exciting. There's so many things here. I, there's a few more things that I would have wanted to see, but I actually, I, I kind of want to bring up my, my guest list of uh, things that I thought might come. So <laughs> I, I wrote down before the announcement going, okay, let's, let's see if I can guess what's going to come out. Okay. And I got a few of them. So yeah. I wrote a 2110 switcher. Uh -huh. Didn't get that, uh -huh. but we did get kind of, a 2110 router? Kind of? Kind of. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Um, and 4K 2110 stuff. So we got a bunch of that. A 12K full frame sensor. Mm -hmm. uh, I did write down an 8K broadcast camera, which we didn't get, didn't which I'm it. a little bit disappointed <laughs> about, but that's all right. Obviously, new resolve. Thought we might see like a HD 16 or a 4K 16, but didn't get those. Um, yeah, I wrote down like a Micro Studio camera 6K. Didn't get that. Uh, a Decklink Duo and a Terranex. We still haven't seen one of those yet. I'm quite shocked about that. Um, a SDI HDMI multi verter router kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, 4K scaling rear output and follow focus motors. But yeah, didn't see any. Didn't see a few of those things. But I got a couple. So that's yeah. Uh... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I think that they covered most of the stuff that I was anticipating, except a new live camera. Uh, I was expecting we'd, we'd do mm. something in that in that arena. Uh, just because it's, we've got the studio cameras, but they're, they're not for high end stuff. They're just not. And they've, Blackmagic is kind of, I don't know. I wouldn't say they necessarily stepped away, but they've certainly not paid much attention to that arena the last few years. So I mean, we used to have the Ursa 4K that was a halfway decent live camera, but they, they mm -hmm. haven't done much in that, in that world for quite a while. So, but uh, 2110 all over the place. <laughs> A lot of 2110 stuff, for sure. Yeah. So are you going to be... Where do you want to start? Well... Do we start from the beginning of the announcement or like... Yeah, let's just, just go in order of what they announced. Uh, I don't know I don't know if you took notes. I, I didn't notice you were taking notes as we went, but I did. I, I was mashing away, yeah. So, so yeah, like the first thing they announced was something that I'm actually very excited about, the new 120 input video hub. <laughs> uh huh. I was planning on getting the 80. I might not be planning on getting the 80 anymore. I might just go straight for the 120. I know that seems crazy, but here in my trailer, I currently have two 40 by 40s, and they are both more than full. So I, I, yep. I can easily use an, at least an 80 by 80, if not a 120 by 120. So I'm probably in the same boat. I would, I definitely consider it, and it's not a huge price bump as well. Which no, I'm it's really not. So the, the other pleasantly one's like, surprised about. The other one's like 995, I believe, and this one's 12995. So, so three thousand dollars extra to get fifty percent more inputs and outputs. And the interesting thing about switchers is, the complexity gr grows uh, almost in, well, it's 
it's a squared relationship. So you add, mm. if you double the number of inputs and outputs, you have four times as many connections internally. So going from 80 to 120, um, that's 1.5 each way. That's actually just slightly over double, like 225% as many and many cross points internally. So it's surprising that the price is only $3,000 more. But uh, I mean, there's a good chance that in the 80 by 80, it's probably got the horsepower to run more. It's yeah. just a case of having more holes and slots to do Most so. Most certainly, so. they were designing both of them at the same time, and they just couldn't mm. get the manufacturing on this new one arranged ahead of time, I would guess. So so many 12G ports. That's a lot. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot. Yeah, but I love the fact that the, the boards with the SDI connections are actually uh, replaceable. So if you have a, a port go out, you can just replace the board instead of the whole, the whole thing. So that was a problem with their older smart video hub products. Uh, I had... I had yep. a, an older one that one of the ports went out and nothing I could do about it besides replace the whole thing. So just the way it goes. So I mean, it is a little bit annoying that to have that replaced, you do have to pull the whole thing apart right. because it's still a blank. It's not like a card style setup, which it's, I always thought, I mean, that, that definitely would add more cost to do it as a card style thing. But I'm just thinking if you do need to repair it, you get to unplug everything, ship it all off and all that kind of stuff. So. I'll get you on the right input here. Let's see. If only you had a 120 by 120, you'd be able to do this so easily. <laughs> I know, seriously. So, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be super, super nice. Yeah, having, only having the 40 by 40 means I have to do some really awkward routing sometimes. And that includes, uh, especially when I'm using something like a Zoom ISO, where it's not actually part of my rack. So I have to plug it into a, a uh, um, what do you call it? A, Patch panel. Yeah, I have to plug it into a patch panel right. to get the signals in and out. And that has to go through two routers yep. in order to get to my switcher. So, yeah. <laughs> but, okay, I think... But, yeah, no, I think that's a that's that's already a huge thing. Yeah. Um, so first, I was kind of hoping and... Go ahead. Sorry, you go. Go ahead, you. No, I was kind of hoping that we would potentially see a new router with a whole bunch of 100 gig connectors. Because I was thinking 2110 was probably going to be a release. Yeah. Um, now we have obviously seen the eight by with a hundred connection. Mm -hmm. So potentially you can link a couple of them into a, a bigger core switch, but yeah. Right. Cause yeah, I was kind of picturing that there might be a empty ATEM, but I think what they're kind of picturing now is going, let's just get the sources and the destinations into 2110. Um, and I guess we're kind of moving into that now and then we can, um, <laughs> SDI those into a, into a constellation or something. So, right. right. Uh, so, so, okay. The next thing they, they announced was the three, uh, two new ATEMs. Um, do you want to, we should probably just cover those real quick because they, they kind of don't fit yeah, in true. with everything else. I need mean, to get those out of the way. And, um, yeah. yeah. A little bit surprising because um, last year at NAB, one of their reps hinted to me that they probably would never come out with 2ME or 1ME 4K switchers. But yet yeah, here they are. So they announced the 2ME constellation. 4K and a 1ME Constellation 4K, which uh, pretty cool. <laughs> uh, I very likely will be replacing the one that's in my fly pack, and um, I may be. You've got a 2ME HD at the moment, don't I you? I do, yeah. And my fly pack is a 2ME HD, and I I love that thing. I use it all the time. I've got three events going on this weekend where I'm going to be using it. Um, mm. uh, it's it's. I use it more than my trailer, honestly, because it's just it's portable, and there's a lot of situations where my trailer just doesn't makes sense uh so i use it a lot and it's been great i've loved it but having a 4k version of that it's going to be pretty nice so I'll yeah forward to that i mean price wise as well so it's 3795 mm -hmm. for the 2me and 8995 for the 4me so it's definitely a big price jump mm -hmm. although for me personally i absolutely love having the maddie on so i've got the 8k constellation right. and the maddie has been so good because i can just routed into my audio console and it just it just works that's right. that's been a huge thing for me so i don't know if i actually ever would get a two of me purely from that point of view because mm -hmm. i don't have to um uh i, I wouldn't have those audio things because i have to spend more money on getting audio done elsewhere well, so like it's definitely that, got its place a lot of that is but, a, the approach you take and apparently you bring in a lot of audio sources over sdi whereas personally i do everything over dante so i don't even mm -hmm. use the audio coming in on sdi on my on my equipment so the from and from 100 yeah for, for my situation maddie is not a an enticing feature <laughs> so yeah just different approaches but but there are certain situations where it would be really nice like for example hyperdex for video playback since they don't have any audio outputs on any of the hyperdex 
bringing in those via Maddie through Rest in pace. for a four ME switcher. <laughs> yeah, four ME switcher uh, would be nice, but no, it's all priority. It's all about different workflows. So, but I, I totally exactly. get where you're coming from. Like the, the Maddie functionality is definitely very cool. Unfortunately, not available on these new these new 4K models. So there's not room for it. There's too many, there's too many connectors on the back. So that's true. Guess, yeah, but. Uh, but interesting that they're doing that, and I also find it interesting that the price points on those things line up with the 4ME and 2ME HD models exactly. So the 2ME 4K is the same price as the 4ME HD, and the 1ME 4K is the same price as the 2ME HD. So, really? Yeah, yeah. I thought that was rather interesting that they went that direction. So. Hey, I'm sorry. I'm just looking at the, the website now. Mm -hmm. So. Because the so the one ME four K is seventeen nine five, one ME HD is nine nine five. Mm -hmm. The four K sorry, did you say they're the same price? Or? No, the four K is the same price as the lower tier HD model. So the two ME four K thirty seven ninety five, and the four ME HD has been thirty seven ninety five in the past. Maybe oh, thirty six. Okay. Oh, oh close, sorry, close. sorry. Okay, I understand what you're saying now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's very close. So, anyway. Yeah, but, that. But it kind of goes yeah, to show you how much how much more processing is required for 4K. It's actually four times the processing instead of double. Yeah. Like people tend to think, but uh, yeah, so you got four times as much data. You gotta 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 handle when you're going to 4K. So anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad those are coming out. I'm, I'm excited about that. Those should be available now, which in black ma black magic terms means that a handful of dealers might have it now, but for most of us, a month from now, if if that. So that's the way kind of where that sort of you know, tends to go. Mm, exactly. Okay. All right. Um, one other interesting thing: uh, they've had a hole in their lineup with the with the panels, the advanced panels. Uh, they're starting over yes. thirty-one hundred dollars for the one ME that they've had in the past. They announced a new one today. It's called ATEM Micro Panel. Uh, instead of connecting to Ethernet like all the other ones, this actually connects over USB-C, uh, and it goes to your computer, Bluetooth or USB-C actually. It goes to your computer and uses ATEM software control on the computer for the communication with the switcher. So you do have to have a computer with that. So uh, it's an interesting, interesting approach, but it does bring the, the price way down. So it's six nine yeah. six seven five instead of the thirty one hundred dollars. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty amazing that they're doing that. And even had Bluetooth and bat yeah, it has a battery yeah. built in as well. Yeah, so yeah, like that's yep. so you can use it without pretty cool about <laughs> just dropping on a desk somewhere. Without any cables, yep, exactly. So it looks like it's more or less a similar form factor to the ATEM Mini Extreme. It looks at least it's always close. Yeah, I mean well it actually could just be the chop out from the um like the old television studio? Possibly. Actually, no, it's, it's slightly different. Um, yeah, the, the button layout's the, the definitely different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but like, obviously, it's not the full T panel, but again, they're just trying to save, save on cost there. Yeah, yeah. So and having the four ME buttons as well. No LCD great. screens. That's a huge price price uh, saver right there. 100%, yeah. Um, the fact that it doesn't have to have its own I guess from a internet. connections point of view as well, so when you... Like especially on the ATEM minis, I think you have like four connections you can use. Mm -hmm. So Depends since you've already got a yeah. laptop, yeah. yes, uh, you you've already got a laptop plugged in. So mm -hmm. why not use that connection to right. remote Piggyback. control that? So it's actually very smart. Yeah, I would not be surprised if at some point we see a firmware update that allows you to plug the USB C directly into the switcher. So interesting. Yeah. No, it's. He didn't mention that, so I don't think it's supported out of the gate. But I would not be, I'd be shocked to see that happen at some point. So you don't have to have a computer at all. So, we'll see. That would be cool. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be very cool. It's like having to set up a computer uh, can be a little bit of a hassle. Like ever since I got my two ME panel, um, I've just realized how much extra hassle that's been having a computer set up for an ATEM. And sometimes you just don't need mm. it. So, anyway. Yeah. But that was a, interesting. That was... So Isaac's saying, I wonder if that can be used alongside the oh, for sure. um, traditional panel. But yeah, yeah it's just sure. yeah. jumping into ATEM. So you could yeah. definitely use it as another thing yeah. somewhere. Black Magic allows you to use multiple panels simultaneously. So there's no reason that that would not work. So, mm. yeah. yep. Very cool. Brett's saying, I'm considering getting the, the smaller panel for smaller scale geeks. Like, it makes total sense. Something oh, you can yeah. just throw in your backpack. Um, like you say, I've got the 2ME panel as well, and that's a huge case. Mm -hmm. And having something like this, because 
you know, we do international flights and stuff and we don't need the, the big panel. Right. That yeah, very, very often when I'm, of sense. I'm doing a kind of a smaller gig, my, my case for my 2ME panel, it takes up half the volume of everything. <laughs> so throw in that, the, the, the uh, fly, fly, my fly pack and a couple cameras and, you know, like the, the 2ME case is literally half of the overall volume of everything that I'm taking for that kind of an event. So it's a hassle sometimes. <laughs> yep. And I've just got my case just under the flight limit as well. So it's <laughs> nice. 31.9 kilos. Yeah. So it just gets it. I had to like get some foam out of there to make it get what, in the way. What did you uh, use for a case? Um, I found a, a, a road case, which was made for an audio console, but it just happened to have the right dimensions. So I actually managed to get the foam into that. So it actually has the right cutouts and I just sandwiched it all together. <laughs> So I think it's for like a um, Alan Heath console or something, but okay, it just yeah. was the right dimensions yeah, as I, well. I found a Pelican case, which was just big enough to hold the foam that comes from yep. with the shipping when the, nice. when the, the 2ME panel shipped. So I had to throw in one inch of foam on the front and in the back in order to make it fit snug. But yeah, it uh, yeah. Worked, out, yep. worked out perfect. So probably too big to fly with, but I don't really intend to fly with that thing. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's not fun. I, I, I can say from experience. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, super exciting that they're coming out with that little tiny micro panel. That's I'm definitely going to be picking one of those up because there's a lot of gigs that I do where that will do the job. So pretty cool. More than say, finally, we have a slider for the A10 minis. That's right. It's true. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so yeah. OK, that's when after that, they got into the 2110 stuff. And boy, oh, boy, did they announce a lot of things here. Uh, so first of all, are you going to be doing anything with 2110? That's a great question. I I need to figure out. Uh, I'd love to try it, but you you really want to go all in if you're going to do it, right? Because it's a. I guess in a way you could almost look at this and go, do you get a router, mm -hmm. or do you get a whole bunch of converters? And I'd be curious to do the math on it and see how many ins and outs you can do for both of those options because I don't necessarily know if you would want to do a router and a whole bunch of 2110. So say um, we've got the 8x12, for example. Um, you need a bunch of them to get into the constellation, for example. Mm -hmm. But then everything's kind of in IP land. That acts as your router. So I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I... It would definitely be more expensive, mm -hmm. but yeah. How about yourself? What, what are you thinking? Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to think about that a little bit because uh, I, I, tra mm. traditionally I've been very in with the, the fiber stuff that they've had, uh, and that's worked great for me. But they've always, 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 always had this limitation that their camera converter product is only is HD only; it doesn't do 4K. It's the only piece of my entire trailer setup that's not 4K is those camera converters. But they've introduced a product now which can take take the place of that. So, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I can reuse all the fiber cable infrastructure that I have. That will just work uh, for fiber, mm. for, for this uh, 2110 stuff. And so what I would be doing is I'd be replacing my studio converters, which, you know, each one takes four fiber connections and gives me four SDI outputs and four SDI, uh, or, well, one channel of SDI return, but the four cameras. And they have basically something that's more or less an exact analog of that with that IP converter 12 or 4 by 12 G product. Uh, and then they've got the other one, yeah. which doesn't do provide power, which is eight in one unit, which is mm. not just an analog, but an upgrade from from that. So tough to say. I, mean, I think there's some potential there. Uh, I hadn't planned on doing 2110 because you know they're uh, they, they hadn't, didn't have 4k and doing 4k is tricky um with 2110 if you don't have like incredibly massive routers to do that but with well the, the that, that's that they're adding that, that that does change the equation a little bit that definitely does change the game because the issue was obviously 12g is just beyond 10 so you mm -hmm. just can't use a normal sfp but right. They have done it. Now, I, I kind of, we were getting things set up, so I, I missed what they were actually talking about, how they've done that compression. But Yeah, he, they, um, he didn't cover it in much detail. Uh, just basically said yeah. we're adding some compression. It's just light compression. Um, it's not an industry standard compression, which is interesting. So it basically means if you, if you use that feature, mm. 
it's not going to work with other people's products. But they are publishing the spec in, with hopes that other people will pick it up. We'll see. <laughs> We've seen this before. Where, yeah. You know, they, Black Magic Raw. You know, that's uh, not necessarily natively supported by many products outside the Black Magic world. But uh, there's, you know, Stranger Things. I mean, that's pretty happen. standard for. That's pretty standard for most cameras that their raw will just be their own little thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah. But One point, thing we but the didn't point of hear about was is it's supposed to be it's supposed to be a standard where, that everybody works with, right? And it's interesting they're throwing their own variant into the mix that's not inherently compatible with other people's stuff. So. Yeah, yeah, it's. What were you gonna say? Um, one thing we didn't hear about is clocking. Yeah, and how they plan because the the original stuff we were talking earlier about it was just kind of point to point, and they just. Mm -hmm kind of just sorted it out, but right. there's no mention about how they're doing that clocking between those different things. I, I, I think that's probably because the, the pace with all of this stuff was so fast. I mean, I, I was, <laughs> as he was announcing these products, I was literally writing as fast as I possibly could and I still couldn't even keep up <laughs> as he was going. Uh, so I think that's just a matter of, uh, we have too many other products that we want to talk about today, so we just need to keep moving on. And, but yeah, you know, obviously 2110 needs to be it needs to have a clock source uh, with their 2110 converter, converters that they introduced last year at NAB. They can act as a clock source when you need them to. Um, mm. So, but the other thing that they introduced today uh, was what do they call it? Basically, a switch. It's, I, guess, I guess it is a switch, a network switch that supports 2110. Um, yeah, what's that? That's um. But they actually, did, yeah, they introduced their own switch uh, because. It's, there aren't a lot of affordable options in in the world. Um, Did we get a price for that switch as well? That was. I have to find it in my notes. <laughs> Let's see. Uh... Because I'm just actually trying to find where that switch is. Because I'm under the I might, I might IP have, converter. I which might is... not have written down oh. notes on it, but they definitely introduced one. Uh... Uh, Morden says two nine nine five for that switch, which actually for a switch with a whole bunch of 10 gig, I had 16 ports of 10 gig yes. and 200 gig ports, I think. Yes, that's correct. I know I wrote it down. I just don't, don't know. I'm not seeing where I, where I wrote it down. Oh, yeah. Ethernet so switch 360p. <laughs> that's what they call it. So yes. Yeah. <laughs> What's with that naming? <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. Let's go back to pre-standard def definition res resolution references. So we get the 360p going on. Yeah, I don't know where that comes from. That's that's really weird. But 16 ports of 10 gig and then two ports of 100 gig. Uh, oh, you know what it is? Hmm. It's 200 gigs plus um, 16 10 gigs. So 360 gig. Oh, that's what the... Okay, uh, yeah, that makes more, a little more sense. But it's but why'd but they put the P on there? Why not, why not 360G? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, why, why P? <laughs> What's... <laughs> That's rather weird. So, is that not was that one not showing up on their website yet? Um, let's have a look. Switch. Oh yeah, here we go. Ethernet switch. It's under. Ah, oh, it's, it's got its own thing now. Um, so yeah, two hundred gigs, whole bunch of sixteen, no PoE. I mean, that's going to be a lot of power to get that PoE. But... Yeah, I'm kidding. But it kind of it kind of makes sense though, because there's not many. Like this is not the kind of router you would use or switch would use in, in a normal network environment. No, this not is at purely all. A, all. And it has this some, is just it has some routing, just routing capability, which is not something you're not going to get from another manufacturer either. So okay, because 2110, the routing is done with something called NMOS, right? So uh, okay. this one supports NMOS, which is um, unique, and it has it has a. If, uh, do you want to bring it up, or do you want me to go to mine? So yeah, there, there you go. So yeah, it actually has an LCD screen, and it has buttons on the front for doing for doing the routing. Mm. So you can actually route, which is great. Your, route your your signals right from the switch. Which, hey, that's great. They I mean, they didn't have an NMOS solution until the announcements today. So which is interesting because they you know, so, so their IP twenty IP converters that they introduced last year, you could select the source directly from the screen. But they also had the decklink cards, which supported IP, and there was no way to select mm. sources with that. So you had to have a, had to have your own NMOS solution. So uh, I'm glad they finally finally have that option. So yeah, when I did when I tested the products back in December, I had to spin up my own NMOS 
uh, server basically in order to just to get video in into that, that deck link card because they didn't have any other way to do it so and while I, I i think their their monitoring thing is kind of hilarious sometimes it's actually quite nice to look at it and go what's breaking my network right <laughs> and have a very clear visual thing of going what's well, and, and what's and broken right be now in, in a, in a being accessible to people who are network network gurus, right? So, I mean, most of the network yeah. switches that are out there, you you have to basically have courses or training in, in networking in order to, to do any kind of even basic management. So I'm sure this thing yep. is going to be pre-configured to support uh, the IGMP snooping. And it, I, I bet it has a PTP clock source in it too. If I was a, bet, if I was a gambling man, uh, there was no mention of it, but I would be surprised, kind of surprised if it didn't. Um, so... You know, with... Well, just looking in the specs here now, because you, you, you got my screen share, yeah? Yeah. Um, so this is p 2 v 2 doesn't necessarily, it's got a clock source in there. Well, the other ones didn't either, didn't say it either, but they, but they had it. <laughs> so the IP converter. Yeah. So. That's, that's very something, interesting. Something we'll definitely have to ask, ask them at NAB here in a few days. So. Yeah, stay tuned. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But, but, since, but since every 2110 network essentially has to have one, why, yeah. would, why wouldn't they include that in that? Especially because that really is acting as a hub for, for, their, for their 2110. So, so someone's asking, um, Timo is asking, what would the 100 gig ports be used for? Now, if we, I think if we go back to the, the 8 by one, that had a 100 gig port on it, didn't it? I believe so. That's maybe one of those details um, that I didn't have enough time to write down. Because <laughs> something, something to keep in mind, just for the the viewers out there, in in 2110, because this, this is all going to be multicast, isn't it? So it's going to yeah. go everywhere, regardless of if it's actually tra traveling, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so... so it always goes to the switch, whether it's going to any other destinations or not. But but beyond that, because I was wondering if you could stack these switches, but. I don't know if there's going to be enough bandwidth to do so. Well, keep in mind, though, that since uh, since uh, you're using IGMP, that only the video streams which are actually needed on a second connection actually tra traverse that that connection. So, you know, if you're True. if you're doing ten connections there, uh, ten ten video streams, and each one's less than ten gig, if it's like in 4K, and obviously in, in HD, each one's about three, one and a half or three, depending on your resolution and frame rate. But uh, so that would allow you to, to actually have quite a few of those uh, go over a 100 gigabit connection. But I, I'd imagine that gig, gig, that connection, 100 gig connection can be used for anything. So uh, just getting any any sort of traffic in or out of there. So just totally. kind of general purpose. Now, I feel like I saw there was another converter box which had a 100 gig port on it because this 8x1 has eight SFP. Yeah, it's, it's individual ones, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, can was, you get was it their cloud a 100 gig to... SFP like multi SFP modules like a a um, a DAC cable. I'm sure there's some way to do it. Because um, yeah, potentially you could actually just go a bunch of these 10 gigs into a single 100 gig. Mm -hmm. In theory, uh, it just depends on how they've um yeah, have done that. Yeah, that's the big one of the big uh, holdups of moving to 2110. Like you're not getting you're not going to get 20 cameras on one connection you know, for the most part. So, and well, but 100 gigs mm. sort of makes some of that, some of that possible, even though it's insanely expensive at the moment. So, but this, this new product makes it much more accessible than it's ever been before. I don't know if you can buy, yeah. a, buy a switch from anybody else that has 100 gig at that price. So. Yeah, exactly. That's, um, cause what was it? Yeah, 2895 of 200 gigs, 16, 10 gigs. Plus, like, yeah, 16, yeah, that's just crazy. And even just the, like the, like those buttons, like, these all add costs. Like yep. those those buttons aren't cheap, right? Um, and the screen and the scroll, like it's actually yeah. really cheap for what they're what they're doing there. Yeah, yeah. The screen's cheap, but the knob is not, and all the buttons are not. So, <laughs> yeah, they're that's they're doing something pretty incredible with that. I, I suspect that this thing is being sold at, at cost, or if not, maybe even below. Probably as a loss leader. Get yeah, debug saying that 100, 100 gig can go into four twenty five gigs or ten gigs, not ten, or I guess eight. Um, 10 gigs, which is, that's a shame, but well, there's, always, there's always a way to do it. I mean, you can always create a lag. So, uh, yeah. Well, I guess that that's, that's going to be the, the question is though, is how much in here is going to be adjustable? Like, can you right. set up 
aggregations and stuff like that. I don't know. Yeah. We'll have to ask those questions because that'd be nice. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we'll have that. So. Yeah. I'm getting some flickering, and I think I probably know what it is. So you go. You go ahead. You go ahead and move it. On. Move it on. And I'll... Yeah. Yeah. Um. What? So let's have a look through the chat. Just so I've kind of been keeping one eye on on what people are saying. Um, the new 8x12G converter is essentially a new talkback converter paired with their bidirectional 2110. Yes, 100%. More or less, yep. And those um, bidirect, I love that they've given the option of SFP or yes. copper. For sure. For sure. That is a definite need. But yeah. really interesting having the talkback on there. That's a really... Wait, you know it's what they're a... doing. This is the replacement for their older older uh, camera camera converter product. Oh, totally. But yeah, like they they're not just locking things into um using like just the black magic cameras and stuff like that. So right. that's really right. Yeah. Yeah. This is their answer. Now they didn't talk they didn't talk audio. No, but but S, but 2110 um it's more or less AES67 for audio, and you're able to freely route that as you will. I, 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 one, of these, I, one of these days I'm going to do a proper video on 2110 and how it works, but essentially yeah. with 2110, each audio or video source is just a separate stream. And so even though you might have a camera that's providing video and audio, the video and audio are actually separate uh, essences, is what they call them. Yes. And you can subscribe to any essence you want. From, from anywhere. So I imagine that's what they're doing with this. They're basically saying, subscribe to your intercom audio for this, with this device instead of... And have they actually, because we haven't actually seen that, have they actually separated them or had the ability to separate them in what they've done here? Or well, we're not sure Well, 2110 doesn't inherently, so I would be shocked if they didn't imp implement that. Um, it's, mm. it's NMOS that's taking care of that. So uh, I yep. imagine it would just work. It should just work. And interesting, for those of us who use Dante, uh, there's supposed to be compatibility between uh, 2110 Audio and Dante, uh, ways of, ways of accomplish that. accomplishing that. I think you have to use the uh, Dante uh, Domain Manager to, to, to do it, but there are ways of having that interact. So essentially, any camera that's providing 2110, there's a way to get that into a Dante system as well. So just inter inter interesting way that things are moving that way. That, w that would be awesome. Yep. Um, Presentation converter. Yeah, that's rather interesting. Um, this is a problem that I'm not. I'm not mad about it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's one of those problems that any of any of us who do uh, production for other companies run into, with some regularity. You know, you've got somebody who's got a, yeah. a laptop and they need to do a presentation going into a, a projection system or LED wall or whatever. This is meant to be a single product to allow you to do everything that needs to be done <laughs> at the laptop and then some. And so they, th they throw in some extra functionality that I. I'm not sure I've ever even actually needed, but 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 there it is. So. Well, I mean, looking at this, this is, in my opinion, brilliant. You got PoE plus plus, so you can do it in one cable. Mm -hmm. and um, that even PC the laptop too, which by the way was was cool. Exactly, because yeah. yeah, it's you, you just use one USB C mm -hmm. straight into the laptop, which will power it. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't need to have a dongle hanging off the edge, which is going to fail at some point. <laughs> of course. Um, and SDI and HDMI output on the stage, as well as mic line in. Uh, audio, don't know if it has audio phantom. Out as well. And they didn't make, um, make any reference, but again, they flew past this, thing, this so fast that <laughs> we, um, we don't know everything that it offers. Yeah, it's got a phantom power in. So, in theory, you could drop a microphone and the lectern or something, with, which needs phantom power. And you got two channels of audio there. Um, now, have they fixed their latency? That's going to be the question. That is a big question. Uh, what kind of latency have you seen when you've when you've played with this stuff? So I haven't actually played with the the previous stuff, okay. but I I watched um, Brandon's video. Yeah. I think he was doing about two to three frames yeah. on that round trip, which is a lot. It is a lot for a non-compressed standard, which makes right. less and, sense. And I was definitely, <laughs> definitely hoping when I played with it that I would be able to get that down because you know those converters actually have a reference out. So, for example, yep. I would take I took a hyperdeck, took the reference out of the twenty one ten, put it into the reference in on the hyperdeck to make sure that it was in sync with all the stuff going on in twenty one ten, 
and I was measuring two and a half frames of latency going over the network. So, yeah, it's interesting to see. But again, I don't, have, I didn't have a proper uh, PTP time source either, so I don't know how much mm. that that adjusts it. Uh, it was, I was just using the one that devices have built in. So, but yeah, that that is a potential issue, and that the latency with all of this stuff. I did see someone earlier saying that they would like to see a HDMI input to IP. Um, did they not have one? Which I guess you kind of have with the presentation converter. Yeah. Uh, but not the not the not the mini converter. So they announced a twenty one. by the HDMI, way, HDMI, but not the other way, I guess. Yeah. So they have IP. Um, what's the I bi- think it was. What's the bidirectional one do? Uh, just SDI. Okay. So SDI bidirectional. Uh, so I guess the presentation converter is essentially their HDMI input. But it's obviously significantly more expensive to to well, do that one. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So the bidirect R one R S D I. Got it. Yep. And they have um, then they have the IP to mini IP to HDMI. Two versions of that SFP and Ethernet. Interesting. And in theory, all these Hyperdeck original ones, uh, sorry, uh, Decklink ones would all work in this ecosystem as well, only in HD. But mm-hmm. right. Um, but I guess we can also jump to anything else you can think of from those converters' point of view. Well, <laughs> I mean, there was quite a few products, and they let's see, they also well, they also announced Smart View, which has a Smart View 4K monitor, yes. which has 2110, a new audio monitor 12G, which has 2110, uh, a firmware update for the Studio Camera Pro, which is going to support 2110, a firmware update for the Simpty Fiber Converter, which supports 2110. Uh, yep. The Smart. Um, Video Hub controller, whatever they call it, whatever their exact product name on, they're announced. They've got a firmware update for that, which supports NMOS, so you can do your routing mm-hmm. with those. Um, but yeah, and, and, and actually from there, that's when they moved on to Resolve, and so that yeah, they really really did focus quite a bit of time on the twenty one ten stuff. Uh, so they're yeah. very clearly because I, I think the the LNI's parts is the the studio cameras which have the ten gig built in. Mm-hmm. Are going to be converted. So, was it converted to twenty one ten on the camera, or was it only through this? The um... well, he said there was a firmware update for the camera, which would imply that it's being done at the camera. Which, which it's not hard to do. Twenty one ten, the video on twenty yeah. video on twenty one ten is by default un- uncompressed. So it's all they're really doing is putting yeah. it in a different wrapper than what they have in the past. So no additional conversion necessary. Although with the four K, I wonder if the their new con- new uh, con- compression is going to be supported by that. Don't know. Yeah, that that's definitely going to be a question to ask. Now, the, I there, think they also said that the studio converter has been turned into an IP converter as well. Right, but the question so, is whether that means you're getting 2110 video out of it because that Ethernet connection has historically been for connection to the camera, not for your not to your network, right? Uh, historically, yes, but it is still just a 10 gig um, PoE++. Right. So in theory, that could go straight into your... Um, router so you actually would have then two inputs and one output um as a converter yeah we don't know details as... <laughs> yeah yeah I'm, I'm just i'm just reading between the lines there and also yeah. the um the sentry converter um which i thought they abandoned <laughs> um because that we because i'm pretty sure even on the the back of this because there was an Ethernet trunk and there's an Ethernet port on the back of the mm-hmm. thing as well as on the camera. Right. That was never turned on. It ne- they never actually finished that. Right. So they're and now we're talking about, I'm guessing through the optical, I don't know if that, that Ethernet's 10 gig or not, but I'm guessing the optical, I don't know. Was that opt- optical and SFP as well? I'm not don't know. Too, sorry, SFP plus? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, there, there's just a passing reference. He said they're doing a software update for the Simpty Fiber Converter to support 2110. Yeah. That's all he said, so we don't know how they're doing that. Yeah, so... Uh, let's see, did that have a date on that? No, I didn't write down a date on that. I think th- I think those were coming for that in the Studio Converter. I think those updates were still coming. Not available. Right yeah, now. I think they're still working on it, trying to yeah. make that work. Yeah. <laughs> but along those As same lines... Um, this is jumping ahead a little bit, but the firmware update for the HyperDeck Extreme 8K to record 4K or four four streams. <laughs> that was, I guess that's not that's, that wasn't 2110 though, was it? Uh, I don't didn't remember. say anything about 2110. Yeah. No, yeah, okay, so. which was interesting because they 
they've got 10 gig built into them. Mm -hmm. I guess you could only do one set of 10 gig, but well, for, I always for wondered for why the HD, 8K though. wasn't. <laughs> you can do 4 8K. Uh, 4 HD uh, it's pretty easily over 10 gig. 4 HD. With, with, the, with, the, with their new compression. So. Yeah, or one, one 4K. One 4K. But yeah, I always wondered why um, they didn't have four recordings at the same time. Right, because like... yeah, every one of those ports is 12 gig it's... SDI, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that makes total sense. And actually, from a price point of view, um, a single 4K is 3,000 and the 8K is um, 5,000. Mm -hmm. So it's actually cost effective to have... It's, yeah, you get four for the price of one and a half or one and two thirds, <laughs> right. which is pretty good yeah um but the big thing for me was all of the hyperdecks now have ip recording mm -hmm. or network recording network recording, recording yep yep um because it used to be just the extremes and just the shuttle <laughs> and the shuttle <laughs> well, of all the, of all the hdmi <laughs> yeah yeah it was um rather odd that the shuttle was the one that they selected because <laughs> no. yeah i've got a whole bunch of the hd pluses and I've been wanting to be able to just pipe that straight into our NAS so that it's just ready right. to go. Right. Um, but yeah, I guess that almost leads us into the Resolve um, live replay. <laughs> I, yeah. That was very interesting. What, what did you... Because it, so it, so it seems like what's happening is they've got the um, hyperdex are recording. They're recording straight to a NAS. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they buffer necessarily through the SSD slash SD card because there was nothing in the front of the right. um, hyperdex on the device themselves. So they're going straight to the NAS, which I guess could have potential issues if your network's not up to scratch and you could start getting some weirdness there. Um, and essentially in Resolve, they were expanding files and very quickly expanding files. I noticed it was like every second or so it was expanding that size, mm -hmm. um, which is quite impressive. But um, yeah, what did you think about... Oh, here we go. We've got a live replay section now. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. So <laughs> I have to admit that I was only sort of half listening because I was troubleshooting our, our Zoom connection at this point. <laughs> Uh, but, yep. but yeah, basically what they announced is Resolve is getting the ability to do instant replay, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> um, it makes sense too. Well, I, for sure. I, yeah. I was kind of expecting a, a hardware panel to release, but I'm like, well, they actually did. <laughs> well, well, it's in like the processing's not happening on the hardware right, panel. Right. Yeah. It, it's all being done on the computer, but, uh, yeah. Uh, one thing we don't know whether that was that's Mac only or whether that's supported on PC because he started out with, when he introduced it by saying that the M1, M2, M3 processors on the Mac have a lot of processing power that's been kind of untapped. You know, each one does a pro res has a pro resin code, multiple pro resin coders, and he, that's when he led right into this this instant replay stuff. Uh, so we didn't explicitly say whether it's something's actually going to work on Windows as well. I mean, the the panel itself works on Windows, right? Um, but then again, it is just a normal edit panel. So yeah, um, yeah, it's with, with, with a little, a few extra buttons and rearranged to make a little more sense for a replay workflow. But essentially, it's just a a panel for controlling the editor. So. Yeah, I'm just just skimming through the the thing to say if there's any um, anything about whether it's Windows or Mac because. And so, how they were doing the actual output was quite interesting. So it seems like. In his demo, he was using a. Uh, actually, no, sorry, was, I think he was using the new, new um, the new box, new. Uh, Ultra Studio, uh, 4K Mini, but also the um, the new, new replay. Yeah, what are they? What are they call uh, what's it called? Too many names. Yeah, no kidding. Black Magic Media Player um, 10G is what they call that. Media Player 10G. Yeah. Um, which is actually cheaper than the 4K Mini. Yeah, it is. <laughs> by by $50. And it does, and so that's. Seems, um, seems more, so. Which is funny because I was actually just yeah. about ready to buy one of those. So. Yes. I, I mean, I don't, I, do you think you'll go for this instead? Probably. Yeah. Because it does more. Yeah. Oh, having an SDI output for monitor. 
brilliant. But that's that's a um, that's awesome to yeah, have that built in. And this this was the one that allowed you, that actually extended your desktop to one of the HDMI outputs too. So you're essentially getting a, yeah. So a, HDMI and SDI has yeah. extended desktop. Yeah, and then there's a second, as well as second the... HDMI for the key, for uh, key and fill. Yeah, so Which, interesting that they actually were able to mute. They were able to mute the um, uh, the key and fill. So it seems like what they do is while you're kind of scrolling things wrong, like, the idea is that you keep the key on on your switcher. Mm -hmm. So they just mute the output, right. and then yeah. when it wants to come up, it just comes right. live. Yeah, right. yeah. It's an interesting workflow, um, that's for sure. Uh, I'm not sure that I would run run it that way. I would probably run the fill and key into inputs on the switcher and then selectively turn that on and off myself. But but this is kind of designed to go as part of your output output uh, signal chain. So yeah, interesting, interesting for sure. But the uh, the monitor route is always on though. Right. So if you have an operator, they can constantly see what they're doing. Right. Um, yeah, but I guess they said up to eight. Um, Uh, eight replays at the same time on the same machine. Mm -hmm. Now I'm guessing we'll have to see. I mean, he was running on that on an M, maybe an M3 Mac Mini, uh, which was ten. I oh, was sorry, eight, uh, ten eighty sixty. Was he on a Mac Mini or was it? A, was that an iMac? I didn't pay. Close sorry, to iMac. Um, yeah, yeah. So that would be at either an M1 or an M3 base yeah. model. Well, yeah, almost, almost certainly an M3. So. Which is really impressive. Yeah. Like to be able to get 10, uh, 8, um, 60 frames at HD feeds at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the, uh, hyper, I'm guessing the Hyperdex was... are doing the, the work there, doing the conversion in that case. So, yeah. Well, they're doing the, yeah, they're, re, they're encoding the, the video. Mm -hmm. But I guess that converter also has a 10 gig Ethernet. So that becomes a um, 10 gig dongle for your right. laptop. Right. So that can go into the, Platypod, which is nice. Right. Um, now, I'll be interested to hear from some EBS operators what they think about this because it's <laughs> such a different workflow from well, uh, what they used to. Probably aren't going to be happy because it's going to threaten some of their jobs. <laughs> um, but well, because I, I, I was kind of I, I kind of zoned out for the again I was working on the on the stream at that point, but the fact that this all ends up in a timeline mm -hmm. is really interesting because then the post people even working on it at the same time with um, cloud uh, can then grab those replays and just drop them into another timeline and it's all happening live. Mm -hmm. And I guess you could have, yeah, the editors, yeah, you, yeah. multiple replay operators all operating on the one project yeah, with I mean, the, the things coming in live. Grant also mentioned that this is kind of ideal for creating social media clips as well, which is, which is true. You know, like, yeah. so whoever's doing your replay, they're very often tasked with coming up with highlight reels and pulling something from social media right out of there it makes a lot of sense. So I guess you could have, yeah, the replay operator in the cut page and then your socials person in the edit page. Mm -hmm. um, and because all that footage yeah. lives on the network, they, they, don't even, they don't have to be on, it can be on multiple computers yeah. and it just, just sort of works, so. And those timeline, those like blips would all pop up as, mm -hmm. as markets. So look, it's, I'm not mad about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Uh, it's, it is a different approach to what we've seen from Replay uh, with other solutions, 100%. for sure. So those but in true Blackmagic fashion, they're just going to go, that's the norm. Let's just <laughs> not do that. Yeah. So <laughs> it'll be interesting to see if this ca catches on or not. Uh, anybody who does yeah. a traditional Replay workflow is probably not going to like this that much. But anybody who's not done those things that way, they're going to be excited by this. So we'll see. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like an EBS operator is going to go. No, I have no idea what's going on here. This is right. this is not my thing. But like you say, for the um, for those being who, able to do live yeah. socials, right? That's huge for, the, for people who have come from the ATEM Mini world, right? So they're going to love yeah. it. They're going to love this. And there was a firmware update for. I'm trying. Been trying to find it in my notes. A firmware update for the Atrium Extreme ISO, which helps with the replay stuff. I guess that's just taking those that footage and putting it making it available on the network. Is that, is that what that was? And also, also it's a firmware yeah. for the television studio HD8 ISO as well. 
Yeah, I, it kind of skimmed over that, but it sounds like they're trying to push... I don't know if they're doing the ISOs, like all eight ISOs, into a a cloud pod. Because there's only a one gig connection, so that's not going to be fast enough, is it, for... Uh, tough to say. Or maybe it is. Yeah, because they're, they're MPEG 4s, so they're pretty... Yeah, so 60, 60 meg files. Yeah, I guess it could saturate a one gig. Um... But yeah, having Hyperdex going straight to a NAS, having ISO models going into a Hyperdex, there's a, well, there's, oh, into there's, a um, thing. He didn't really specify it, but there's also the USB-C port on there, which could be 5, 10 gig easy. So, yes. Still, there's just so um, many unknowns. <laughs> just, <they're, laughs> they, didn't get, they didn't have time to go into details on a lot of this stuff, so some of it's just speculation, and some of it's like, wait and, wait and see once the software... Honestly, that stream could have been a five-hour stream. But yeah. there was so yeah. much that got missed. For sure. Um, but, they, but they did spend a lot of time on the replay functionality. I, um, after the quick pace of everything else, I was shocked how, how slow he was going with the replay stuff. Yeah, I mean, Resolve is definitely his baby. I, I, I know he loves that thing. Mm -hmm. um, so for a four-camera workflow, I need four hyperdev recordings into the Blackmagic Cloud and being output by the media player. So yes, I think if you want ProRes you would need that, but it sounds like we might be able to do that with the ISO. So say if you have an SDI ISO Extreme or a Pro ISO, in theory, you could have your ISOs just being piped as a H.264 straight into your NAS, which okay. yeah. is, again, for socials and stuff, that's brilliant. Because mm -hmm. people can be, you can be doing a concert event and the editors are just watching it happen and go drag, drag, and just like, it's just there. He didn't mention vertical support, though. So, uh, you know, how well is that going to work for social if you don't have vertical? Well, you, you know, you just got to put it sideways. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> is, isn't that how it works? That's, yeah, or rotate it on your desk, you know. I hope it doesn't catch fire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, we both completely missed uh, um, <laughs> April, April Fool's this year. <laughs> but it happened like, oh, no. Ran out of time. Oh... Uh... So, gosh, where to next? There's so many things. Yeah. Uh, this could be a five-hour live stream. Did we miss anything else with Resolve, Replay, 2110? Now, obviously, there's a whole video on the like new AI Resolve stuff, which I was kind of watching with one eye, and mm -hmm. there seems to be some very cool stuff, especially in the audio department. Mm -hmm. Being able to... I noticed there was a, like a music track there, mm -hmm. And they use AI to bring down the drums or bring up the bass and reduce the vocals, like take out the vocals. And that vocals was very... Because when you have just a single like mono vocal with no effects, that's super easy to get rid of. But this was like a very echoey, I was hearing it in stereo vocal, which was gone. I was like, that's yeah. properly impressive. Yeah. It's kind of the holy grail when it comes to audio editing, right? Like being able to pull things out of a fully complete mix and do yep. interesting stuff with it. Yeah, that's... Well, I mean, even last year at NAB, I was editing my um, floor content in Resolve, and I just put on the noise removal, and there were speakers pointing at me, blasting audio, and all you can hear is just the two microphones. Mm -hmm. It just sounds like we're in a quiet room. I'm like, mm -hmm. this is insane. Yeah, yep. We've seen it's, huge um, strides in that arena in the last couple of, couple of years. So that's yep. really exciting. And fortunately, it's, it's coming to most of the products in the video world. It isn't just the Resolve and whatnot so yeah pretty yeah. cool stuff pretty cool stuff for sure uh, i'm gonna have to go back and watch that video again just like i say i was i was uh, troubleshooting zoom issues <laughs> uh as that was um going on. i guess the other thing we saw next was the cloud store max mm -hmm. yeah there's actually two, um, two different products not just one so yes yep. the 48 and the 24, 24 terabytes yep yep ah that's where i saw the 100 gig port Yes. Um, which doesn't help in a empty point of view, but... Well, today. <laughs> being able to go into a... <laughs> what, well, what, yeah, it, it, what, what do you bet they're going to have 2110 support on those things before too long? <laughs> How? Like, what would... Like, we're I mean, we're I, direct I, from camera, got cam like camera supporting 2110 right into the cloud store. So, I'm already seeing that with some of their cameras, not, not using 2110, but... Uncompressed video in real time going into your, cl your cloud store. 
I mean, I wouldn't say no, that's for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was eight uh, M.2s. No, sorry, 12 M.2s in a RAID 0. Uh -huh. <laughs> so uh, make sure you've got a backup, <laughs> I guess is all I'll say. <laughs> exactly. Because for those who don't know, if you lose one of them, You're you lose everything. <laughs> yep. Everything. everything. All gone. Because you're not going to... Bye-bye. Having, having one twelfth of your data missing effectively means all your data is gone. So. Yeah, it's, it's gone. It's, it's gone. Yeah, it's not like, um, you're not like you lose one frame out of 12 and <laughs> fake it. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. Uh, Ken's asking, would that small hyperdeck big enough? In theory, all of the hyperdecks yeah. now would be fine yeah. for this. Um, so if you get a HDMI workflow using the... Um, all the current ones, anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cause, so cause it's it's not having to do much, by the way, of additional processing. It's just taking whatever it's uh, sending to the disk, and sending it over, yes. over the network. So, yeah. Hundred percent. Not a big deal. It's not a big deal for it to do that. Glad that's coming. Glad that's happening. I've got a whole bunch of the hyperdecks that that are going to get get that firmware update here real soon. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I might actually finally invest in a cloud store, which I had not done up to this point. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, we've, at, at our office, we've got a QNAP NAS, I think. Mm -hmm. So I'd be curious just to try pushing it to that to see if it's fast enough to do so. Um, but we also have editors that are editing off that. So that's something to consider is since there's no buffer, if you're recording to that NAS and there is something that chokes on the, either the disk or the network, you could lose your file in theory. Well, sorry, I don't know if you lose your file, but you definitely would start dropping frames and potentially it would cut out at some point. Right. So definitely keep an eye on the record light and make sure it's still on. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So. Um, where to next? Is it, is it camera time? Well, he, he, had, he did one more, talked about one more thing before he got to cameras. Uh, this one was rather interesting. I'm not sure I, I understand where he's coming from. He talked about rental licenses. For, for for software. Yes. So I think I think he was talking about that for Resolve, as in like the studio Resolve right. Studio. It, it's only two hundred and ninety five dollars to buy outright, so I'm wondering what that license model looks like. I mean that's it's, it's, I mean, Well look it's it's two hundred and ninety five it can it can be a lot for some people, I get that. But it's also the cheapest you're gonna get for any software anything like it as well already. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just looking at loading up Logic, Logic Cloud now to see if that um, uh, has popped up. Oh, yeah, it's there now. So let's see what they give us now. Because I'm sure their poor website's getting attacked by everyone right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'll, but I'll, for... I'll, yeah, go ahead. Now, that's an interesting point for large colleges and things like that, because then you have a license which you can then push on to new students and things like that um, if they're on their devices. So they come in and that's a good point. Yeah, do it uh, but also for a, a live event where you have a whole bunch of editors you're just bringing on, I don't know what the pricing will be for for that. Yeah. And the other interesting thing about that is, I mean, you've got the free version of Resolve, which does like 90% of what this, what Studio does anyway. So uh, I, I don't, I, I don't, yeah, he I didn't say if like the live coming. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's an odd, odd, uh, odd choice in my, in my mind. So. All right, let's have a look. So licenses, uh, uh, let's rent a license. Resolve studio with a lot of purchases too. Okay. So 60 Australian per month for a resolve license. That's, I think our Australian price for a full license is by four eight uh, four fifty or so. Okay, so so it's eight, about eight months. You you, if you're doing less than eight months and you know, you're never yeah. going to need it after that. Then you could save you some money there. But yeah, I think I do like the idea of like moving it between people. Yeah. Um, because, which actually makes sense because if you got uh, a bunch of editors, you only do things temporarily. Then you can kind of go, hey, here's your license for that job that I'm assigning to you. Right. Um which in theory would also match up with all the, the cloud stuff too. So I guess it actually, I guess it makes sense. But yeah, even just from a license management point from of view. A few, from a few, for a few situations, I can see it making sense. I guess part of that 
comes back to though how does the existing license a studio license work is it, are you licensed is it, is it licensed to an individual or is it licensed to a computer so. computer so that's the issue we've got at our office at the moment so we actually might i don't know if we can assign a license into the cloud so because we've got a whole bunch of cards from cameras we've bought mm -hmm. um and we've kind of gone we have to be careful about which um camera we push this to i'm oh, sorry which computer we put this on because we have you know a whole bunch of imax in our office so this actually might be useful to be able to push it into the cloud and kind of go, cool, someone's sitting at this desk and they need to edit so they can now grab that license and use it. So if it's a license management portal, I can see that being very useful. Interesting, yeah. Because you can't actually, once you've loaded your license onto your Resolve on your computer, you can't actually see what that license was. Right. So I just loaded one on my computer, but I don't actually know which one I, I did. So yeah. it's... um. Yeah, anyway, do well, they, do they still those, do, those things they, to look at. They still do the dongles for uh, for studio, or is that you can still buy dongles? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's the way I've actually done it. Like, I have a couple of dongles, and like I just moved the dongle to whatever computer I happen to need it on. So. But then that's a USB thing, and then you lose yeah. it, and then it's <laughs> and it's not USB C, <laughs> so you need a converter on can you have computers that use USB C. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, along with that, they also announced licensing for organizations too, which uh, same part of same sort of idea i guess so yeah so the way it may sound like is, is more for larger companies where you want a variable number of seats yeah i guess it makes sense yeah, yeah. cool all right yeah it doesn't impact me but you know i'm sure there's people out there who can use that so 100 okay all right so then we get into one of their biggest announcements uh their new cameras so, in more ways than one yeah, yeah that's uh so I don't know if anyone saw the on social, someone put up a photo of the billboard of the Osa sitting on the side of the billboard. Um, so that kind of got leaked a little bit early. But um, yeah, we've got a new 12K camera. Yes. And full frame. It's, it's full frame <laughs> and full low frame, like uh, yeah. <laughs> 70 mil as well for the, the other option. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, I, as, a, as a DP myself, this is something that I'm um, I'm pretty excited about. And watching the, the demo footage that they shot there, the dynamic range and stuff that we're getting out of this, it's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to see some like studio proper daylight environments and to see skin tones, because skin tones is the, the biggest thing. Is how, how can you accurately rep represent that? Mm -hmm. um, but the fact that we've now got... The storage is an interesting thing, but I, I guess when we're talking this kind of data rate and stuff, you really do need a solid storage option. It's right, like right. Yeah, so SD cards are gone. For anybody who didn't it's, see the stream, they're introducing a new media module, which has was it four uh, M.2 drives in it. Is that what, is that what they use? Um, probably yes, in RAID yeah, 0 yeah. as well. Yeah, it's four, but then four, again, most... four M.2 drives used internally. Uh, each one gets uh, four PCI lanes for a total of 16 PCI Express lanes. Is that how that works? Uh, but that gives you the bandwidth. Well, I should you download some of these clips. To, uh, it gives you the bandwidth you need to, in order to handle this 12K footage uh, coming off the camera. Um, yeah. So, variable, different frame rates from, I assume, 24 at the low end. They, I, they didn't explicitly say up to 180, depending on what resolution you're shooting uh, in 12K mode with different, different vertical resolutions. You can do eight, uh, 12 by 8, 12 by 6, 12 by 5, and one other one. I was. I couldn't get to, I was writing, I was having to write too fast. Yeah. Um, Here we go. So we've got um, basically 24 to 220. Okay. And 220 is at 8K resolution. Okay. Which is impressive by itself. Yeah. Yeah. And then it has a, a mode where you can shoot 9K with super 35 size. So yeah. crop at the sensor. Yeah. So here's the module. Um, how fast is this module? Yeah, having 10 gig on the actual um, camera too. Mm -hmm. yeah, 10 I'm gig not mad about it. Yep, yep. I wish it was at Ethicon, but <laughs> they apparently just don't believe in Ethicon. I don't know what it is about that. Yeah, that, that extra 50 cents is just too much for them. So. Okay. Uh, I've, I've bought a couple recently. They're actually quite expensive. Well, the when six, you, when the, you um, and I buy the them in retail, yes, they are quite a bit more expensive. But at the scale they're doing it, I'm sure they'd be only spending 50 cents more on each one. <laughs> Oh, they, the, the 6A Ethercons are like $30. They're, they're not cheap. 
But anyway, that that's that's a whole that's a whole other thing. <laughs> but um, oh, hey, that's, that's that's pretty cool. So let's do a twelve k open gate because you know we're cool like that. Mm -hmm. Constant quality, oh, constant bit rate at eighteen to one. One point four hours on a one terabyte and two hundred mega second. Their compression is pretty good. Not that it's not a traditional black magic raw, which has always been pretty good. So. Yeah, I've I've always loved the Black Magic Raw. They've done a really good job of that. Yep. And yeah, having the docking station, which is quite expensive, but yeah, inter inter interestingly expensive for what it is, because I mean it's not really doing any processing. It's just a an interface. Although didn't didn't he say? Oh, okay, yeah. So I think it was four M dot twos, and they're all running four lanes mm -hmm. of PCI, so a total of sixteen. So yeah. in theory, it's acting as a RAID controller. Mm -hmm. Well, it's probably just more like... I don't know if that's like going to be in the... Uh, I guess, it, yeah, it depends on if it's being striped or if it's um just... I yeah, would, I would assume, so, if you're doing it for performance, it's going to be striped. So, yeah. Yeah, so there had to be some sort of ray controller in there somewhere. So either it's in the camera slash dock or in the... um, And Wi-Fi built in? That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. not having to plug in a thing. So on set, you can set up a Wi-Fi access point to uh, get the proxies up to the cloud. Right. Love it. Yep. Um, I do actually want to do some playing with that. And yeah, USB for your phone. Um, I know I've got some clients looking to do that to and just have a phone plugged in. And also USB for the viewfinder, which, which is new. They've not done that in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when I saw the the thing on the billboard, I saw the USB port and I was like, are they going to give us motors for focus and zoom and stuff like that? Because I thought that's what that might have been for. Mm -hmm. um, but no, viewfinder. Mm -hmm. And makes me wonder being a normal USB C, it makes me wonder if it's a USB data connection or whether they're using a USB alt mode like for HDMI or display port or something like that. So you could actually use a different device if you wanted. Don't know. Yeah, that that that's a good question because if it's a weird protocol like non-standard, then if someone was to plug in a phone into that port, mm -hmm. then that's potentially dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, I imagine they use the, they'd probably use the standard signal lines just a non-standard encoding. But true. we don't we don't yeah, know. Yeah. yeah, I mean the smart thing would have been to have it be USB C alt mode and do either Display Port or HDMI for. Uh, yeah. But who knows? We don't know. We don't know yet. Your Wi-Fi won't, won't love you if you start uploading mass amounts of data. But it does do that, um, uh, the proxies on there. So that is definitely makes that and more That's kind doable. of become standard for most of their cameras in, 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 the, in the recent past. We're doing proxy as yep. well as the raw. Yeah. Definitely super easy. And the proxies, the quality is not bad either. Right. Like you could easily upload that if you needed to for a, you know, a news thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, um, so 12 gig SDI out. Uh, so two of them. Uh, yep. So, but that means 4K. So shooting in 12K, but you're not getting anything more than 4K out of the camera for live. Uh, no 12, <sighs> no SDI input. So no camera control. <laughs> so I was, ah. Uh, <laughs> although I know that's killing you. Although <laughs> it's killing me, but. Do they have the REST API protocol, which they put onto the other cameras? I think they actually mentioned, so I think could you... mentioned that. Yeah. Um, now, you might be able to get iris control, although they took away the lens port, um, which is... They took away the one they've used in the past, but they actually have a Wemo port on it. He did mention that too. So more standard. Yeah, so it's got an external yeah. Wemo port. I don't know if that can break out to a lens cable. Well, he, he, I don't know he, if I... he explicitly mentioned lens control from the Wemo, so... Yeah, so it's yeah. got, um, I can't remember what was on that pin. Um, it's like the RS uh, three pin Fisher, that's standard um, for power and runtime. But mm -hmm. yeah, no, and yeah, no, price wise, signal, 15. Signal like start, stop, record. Um, yep. Yep. And all, all, all that standard stuff. So fourteen nine nine five on the price for the, so by the way, the name of the Blackmagic Ursa Cine LAF, Cine LF or 12, 12k LF or whatever. So it's interesting that they, the name, oh, it's, name on the website didn't actually put LF in the name there. 
they yeah. they did in the slides in the presentation, but on the website they're not oh. showing that. So okay, maybe Black Magic is going to shorten the name of something for the first time ever. I believe in miracles. It's possible. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, also, yes, it's supporting um, SRT. Yes. So having built in yeah, encoder, which in theory could go to a um, uh, streaming bridge, streaming bridge, yep. Or or the, or the um, which I guess or the, like the television studio. Yeah. Uh, yep. HD8 uh, camera sports. At least I think. Although I'm so guessing. Uh, which was what I did with the 12K. The original 12K is no painting, which mm. you hates me. <laughs> um, because, especially with this ha having Wi Fi built in, mm. you could put a Teradek transmitter on the back, mm. have Wi Fi for camera control um, going to a streaming bridge, um, and just set the bit rate to one kilobyte. It doesn't matter. Like, you, you don't care about the video for the SRT side. You just want it just for the camera control. Mm. Um, I've been playing with that a little bit, and it would work. Have we seen? But the not having the painting. The camera has a color corrector in, inside of it at all. <sighs> Didn't say anything. But again, I'm definitely going to ask the question, and if they don't have it, I'm going to have words. <laughs> um, but it comes with a pelican case. I, it looks like yeah. a true pelican, which is nice. Yeah. I was worried it was going to be some crappy yeah, so Chinese package thing. package that includes a road case, 8 terabyte media, a battery plate. Yep. Um, uh, top handle, the 15 mil top rail, uh, the base plate with the 19 inch. They have a 15 inch model as well, apparently. Mm -hmm. uh, it comes with a PL and EF mounts. Mm -hmm. um, the, the standard battery plate's a B mount, which is interesting. Um, now, does it run on 12 volts? Uh, I don't know. There on the, on the screen, it said 24, 24 volt power supply. So I think the native power so it's, connection. So it definitely, 24. yeah, but will it run on a V mount or a gold mount? That's going to be an interesting I, question to I, ask. I think you mentioned the option for uh, different types of battery plates. So I assume that yeah. gold, gold mount's an option too. Definitely. definitely it, yeah, it just depends on if it can run on 12 volt. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, having to swap everything to 24-volt batteries is... Oh, that's fun. Um, would be a, a welcome wallet with a QR code to software down. Yeah. I'm glad they put that in there. But right. It seems pretty obvious, though, just looking at what they're, where they're going with this, this is really intended to be for cinema production, you know. Uh, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. No. I, and, I, I know I get mad about it going, why is this not in live? Because... I'm weird like that, and I love using cinema cameras in live because it just looks beautiful. Yeah. Um, also, but for cars, you have very competent camera operators, that's for sure. <laughs> so. I mean, look, I, I do Steadicam with uh, Super 35 at fully open with doing my own focus, so yeah, yeah. it's doable. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Someone like you can handle it. But yeah, I, 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 <laughs> I can tell you that a lot of the camera operators I, I hire would never be able to handle a camera, camera like this. So Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Yeah, for budget reasons, you know, the camera operators you can hire for three or four hundred dollars a day, they're not going to be the ones that can handle a camera like this. So that's a good point. Um, Two hundred fifty watts uh, power supply is included, so you're probably going to be through chewing through batteries pretty yep. quickly on this thing, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, um, no doubt. So. And yeah, micro OLED um, viewfinder, bunch of extra buttons as well, which is nice. nice. Um, adapters for all that kind of thing. Yeah, so it's very much the standard what we're seeing on most other cameras now with the 15mm rods and stuff like that, which is mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and the uh, the future 70mm as well. Yeah. That's going to be <laughs> the 17, something else. 17K. So if you, for anybody who didn't watch it, they announced a 17K version of this camera. Uh, he technically called it a 65mm. Uh, close enough to 70, right? Uh, so the sensor on that yeah, so the 50.8 by 23.6 millimeters, so bigger than full frame. Uh, and that camera. I'm actually curious what that's. So could, uh, the Alexa 65 is a 54 by 25 mil. Okay, so that one's a little. That's a bit smaller than Alexa 65. Yeah. Um, but the fact that we can actually buy 
well, soon, um, <laughs> buy a 65 mil camera because you can't actually buy the Lexus 65. That's rent only. Mm -hmm. um, yep. <laughs> that's pretty cool. We, yeah, we don't know the price of it. We don't know exactly when it's going to ship. Um, uses either a Hasselblad or a PL mount. So you're not going to be doing your EF lenses on this camera. Um, which, when you're oh, ready, so USB-C display port on the drawing. I'm not sure if you oh, saw that somewhere in the oh, thing. Okay. Um, someone in the comments have said that. So Interesting. Okay. Could that mean that that could plug into a a screen with USB-C or something? Yeah, that, that sh should mean that, yeah. Yep. Uh, whether it supports HDMI or not is another, another question, but DisplayPort, you know, yeah, that's a, lot of, a lot of monitors out there just support DisplayPort, so, yeah. I mean, if someone's using DisplayPort on set, then I've got questions. Or, but that's... Like I mentioned in my Mac video a few weeks ago, there are active converters that will convert from DisplayPort to HDMI, which are pretty inexpensive, so even if it didn't support it's HDMI, funny, actually. you can convert, you convert, convert pretty easily. I don't know what it is about your videos, but I typically don't have issues until I watch you you <laughs> making a video about issues, and then I start having those issues. I'm like, have you just jinxed me by, by these videos? Like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, uh, but I've been having those problems all along since the M1 came out. My, I've got an M1 Mac Mini that's sitting over here on the desk, which, I, which is what I'm using for the Zoom ISO, and yeah. it's been a massive headache trying to get HDMI out of the thing into a video production and it works great with monitors, but you're trying to get into a video production system and it's just been a, it's a, it's just a nightmare. So, yeah. 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 Um, so what else did we, Oh, the, the Pixar Pixis yeah. new name. Yes. So they had, they had introduced a new product line, the black magic Pixis six K cinema camera, which seems like it's a slightly upgraded version of the cinema six K camera that they introduced a few months back. Hmm. It's kind of my impression. And I know a lot of people on the internet will be very excited about this. They finally got a block camera, and <laughs> I hope you're excited. But uh, I know for me personally, I do not like block cameras. I hate having to build cameras. <laughs> I want to just pull a camera out of the case, put on a lens, and put on a battery, and hit record. Yeah, so you'll, you'll just have to I build don't want your to own custom build... case then. <laughs> well, but yeah, it, especially as a steady cam operator, it infuriates me because. Um, because you got things like the the Reds, the uh, Alexa Minis, and things like that. You know, great cameras, but the fact that we have to put all these things on it ends up being heavier than the the big body version. Right, right. And also more like more vibrations, more things, which is um, makes a big difference in um, Steadicam land. Not but to anyway. in a lot of cases, you end up with a cable nightmare getting everything connected and wired in in order to make it all work. Uh huh. So, uh -huh. Yeah. so look, I mean, it's it's not bad by any means. I. I, I personally was not looking for a box, but I know a lot of people are, yeah. and a lot of people will be happy. Well, there are a lot of people um, who don't take that pocket camera form factor seriously. You know, you show up on set with one of those, it, it, it doesn't communicate the same level of professionalism that a box camera does. So I know there's been yeah. a lot of people who've been reluctant to use the Blackmagic pocket cameras specifically for that reason. Yep. So yeah. this is a, a step yeah, in the right direction for that. Yeah. Although for me, it's like... I'm glad there is a monitor on there, but you don't have to have an external monitor to run the thing. Like most Reds is you have to have a screen to actually use the camera, <laughs> yeah, yeah. which is an absolute pain. Usually, usually one of theirs too, right? So, <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So being able to actually use the camera by itself, that's a check mark for me. <laughs> that's a, yeah. I never thought I'd have to actually, you know, say that's a thing, but... Yeah. Um, it's still surprising to me, though, that, they, that Blackmagic, being a company that's so invested in broadcast, it did not make more concessions for broadcast use for, for a camera like this. So. Well, because I would... So we've got a, a studio, like a green screen studio. I've been wanting a 6K... Um, so they released the 4K micro studio. I've been wanting a 6K micro studio because I just want to bolt the thing to the wall and just call it a day because mm -hmm. the shot doesn't really change. I don't, right. I don't need the big Ursas and stuff. Right. Um, so if this had the camera control and the painting on there, then great, I, I could use that for a bolts on the wall camera, but it doesn't. Yeah, it's not. It's not. And like and what I don't understand now, I do actually want to scroll down to the bottom and find out if you can buy the lens mount separately, because I don't know why they've released three different models and not just. Um, yeah, that was surprising. Um, they, they got to the end of the announcement and basically said, yeah, there's three versions of this camera. One that's uh, 
uh, EF mount, one's PL mount. Is, is the main one L mount? Yeah, it's L mount. Okay, yeah, which, which is what yeah. they did on the Cinema 6K. Uh, so I'm glad they still got EF and PL mm -hmm. because L mount is, I mean, all my lenses are EF and PL, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, hardly anything on L mount yet. That's, where were we up to? that's, I think they did that so they would have a more universal way to convert to other, to other mounts. Yes. Cause there aren't that many and L like, mount lenses out there yet. Yeah. And it's definitely the right way to do it. Um, but what I don't understand is I see four screws there mm -hmm. and they all look exactly the same size. So why not make it an interchangeable lens mount? Like what's. What's going on there? I, that that I don't have doesn't make a lot of sense to me. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't Why? Make a Where's lot of sense. my answer? It doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, cause, I mean, because they've done that in the past. Like a lot of the other cameras have been yeah. interchangeable mounts. Because so. I've got a whole bunch of their Ursas and I swap out lens mounts all the time. Mm -hmm. It's brilliant. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, there is a chance that they may actually release the lens mounts. Um, I'm not sure. I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd uh, put my money on it because since they have the different versions of the camera. So um, Nigel's saying that um, releasing all three is kind of silly because you can do an L to any adapter. Yes, that is true. Do you I don't know the what the adapters cost. Uh, so anytime you do a conversion, yeah, if it's a smart one, mount, one lens yeah. one's mount to another, you lose something, and it's just inevitable. Even if even the yep. thing you lose is only performance, like how fast the autofocus is, or something like that, on the on the lenses that support that. But there's there's always something. You always lose something in the conversion. Yeah. So. Yeah, so, like, it's definitely nice to have. I, I know you were saying that you've had a friends who have had issues with the 6K sensor. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't actually used this one yet, so I'm definitely keen to try it on the on the show floor. Yeah. Well, um, we, we've seen this a number of times from Blackmagic. They introduce a new camera. There's an issue with the sensor out of the gate, and then they get them corrected eventually. But, like, for the first little while after a camera comes out, they have some, whether it's firmware I see, or... I see what you did there, out of the gate. Yeah, That's exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but then inevitably they'll get it fixed. But like very, uh, we've seen it a number of times where they introduce a new product and then it's not performing up to expectations initially. Yeah. So, in the long term, I don't I don't worry about it. But for anybody who is an early adopter, there could be some growing pains for a bit. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, and obviously all the Blackmagic Cloud stuff built in as well. Yeah, but um, the Ethernet on this one's only one gig. It doesn't do 10 gig, so. Yes, so no 2110, mm -hmm. sad face? No, yeah, no 2110. Um, copying raw is gonna be slower than it would be with a, with a 10 gig. Um, proxies will, will should be fine. Uh, yeah. RTMP slash SRT streaming, does it stream the streaming bridge? Yeah, did they, did they actually say SRT? Uh, he did not explicitly say that. Um, I'm guessing that because that's the way they've been moving with that in the last year or so. And most of their products uh, that support the streaming support SRT now. So just an assumption on my part. Okay. So it does have the rest camera control over Ethernet for this. Yep. But it doesn't say anything about... Well, sorry, I haven't read this, I haven't read this yeah. yet. I, I, I would be, I'd be surprised about... if it supported the, the painting features. Um, yeah, me too. If it does support it, though, because what price was this again? That was this one was two nine nine five for this camera. Two nine nine five. And let's get the PL, and it's thirty one ninety five. Hmm. So yeah, it's a great price. Yeah, I wonder from uh, no question. Yeah, yeah. I do wonder actually if you plugged in a USB to five gig or a ten gig um, Ethernet. Would you get faster over that? It's, it depends if their OS has support for a driver for that or not. Tough to say. I mean, they're doing the pocket, so I'm yeah. guessing they wouldn't have different drivers. I wouldn't think so. Yeah, the growing pains with the Cinema 6K has been a learning experience, but I think I'm understanding it better. Yeah, that's the thing. It's yeah, every, that, everything. That's the friend that I mentioned that's having, having trouble with it, my friend Paul. Yeah. So, All right. Yeah. No. Um, question, which one would you purchase, the EF, the um pl or l yeah that's gonna vary based on what lenses somebody's got like personally i don't own any pl lenses yeah. but i've got a whole pile of ef so for me it'd be a very natural yeah. to get to get ef but for somebody who works but if you get the l cinema, you can convert to those old two yeah so, so that's true that is true so question is how yeah. good how good the conversion is um and paul if you're still mm. if you're still watching how was your uh l to ef adapter worked for you 
So I know he bought one of those. Yeah, please. So, please let us know. Yeah, curious to hear. So. Yeah. Um, I haven't checked. Yeah, it. so that's June availability? Yeah, well, well, yeah, that's what they say. But in Black, Black Magic, that probably means more like September, October, November. That's the way that uh, almost all I'm a, um, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a reseller here in Australia. Um, so and you, it's you always get, fun to look at the website. <laughs> No, no, no. It's it's more on the website. They'll say expected late J June mm -hmm. and then late September right. and then late October <laughs> and then late. <laughs> it just keeps getting pushed back and back. Right. Yeah, like last last year when they introduced uh, the new uh, eighty by eighty video hub, that one was supposed to come out in June, I think, or something like that, and it didn't ship till December. So it's just normal for the yeah. products to take for, take longer than they expect. And and now yeah. doesn't mean now. It now means within the next couple of months, you'll actually be able to get your hands on one. So. Anyway, I mean, mm. I may have, we may have beat that one to death. Yeah, so yeah. Next um, one we announced was the Resolve Micro Color Panel. Um, so yeah, this, which is great. Which they, he, had, he announced as a way to control the iPad, but obviously going to work with Windows and Mac as well. Uh -huh. So uh, it had three trackballs for doing color control, color adjustments. Um, Just notice the um, the the old micro is gone. So this is a replacement for it then. It, it's, it's significantly lower price if I remember right. Yeah, because the other one was around. It's like a thousand dollars, wasn't it? A thousand dollars or something. Yeah. And the new one uh yeah because because i i have that old one which had no screens yeah um so they've replaced it entirely interesting yeah uh, i mean it makes sense it's interesting he said 495 for the price on the stream but the website showing 509 is that is that australian Ooh. dollars or, not, or is that us no this is this is dot, dot com so this should be the okay that's the us price discrepancies in there yes and I think well with as many products as they introduced today I'm not sure that there's <laughs> something that's not not lining up between the website and and uh, and the announcement yeah exactly so, yeah now the question is what um what firmwares have been released so far so we got resolve beta 1 is now available um ATM switcher which in, supports the 2 me and 4 me 4k so it typically means that's in stock Oh, you're seeing stuff that I'm not. Like I, I'm on their website and viewing the same page, and it's not showing the same thing. Okay, okay, yeah, they did a full. Well, I'm in a, I'm in Australia, so it's like it's, yeah, it's it's shorter for me to go to yeah. Melbourne than it is for you. So yeah, it takes it takes longer <laughs> to get here. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I did a re I did a full refresh, and it's showing up now. So ATEM update updates available. Let's see if the HyperDeck HyperDeck updates okay, available. Okay, so there's a, is it? Yep, HyperDeck 8.4. Yep, I know what I'll be doing soon. Yep, um, the Ultra Studio 4K Mini gets the uh, update for live keying and mutes on outputs. Um, that's cool. HyperDeck 8.4, so that includes network record and playback, network secure option, HTTPS, NTP, growing files. But no, um... oh, okay, that's interesting. So the 4K Studio Pro adds support for internal cache. So if you're worried about recording to a network drive, um, you might want to look at a 4K Pro for that cache. Um, Where? Oh, wait a minute. Which. Does it does it have have space for one that we just never knew about? Well, I don't know if that's using the SD or SSD in the front, but did did the original HyperDeck so your Pro have a not, M.2 not in the there? Pro? Uh, no, that, so the Extremes they've they've had the Extremes had the uh, M.2 expansion in the bottom for caching. Uh, that's, they've never said anything previously about the the Studio line having any sort of caching. So, I'll have to rip mine out of my rack and <laughs> pull it apart and see if there's some internal. Oh, do you have a 4K Pro? Do you? I do. Yeah, I have a 4K Pro. Yeah, I I bought it for, primarily so I can do alpha 
alpha key on for play, video playback because I'm because my switcher doesn't support yep. uh, 4K 60. But that's the only model in the studio line that will do key and fill with uh, 4K. So I bought one just for that reason. Uh, yeah, I might have to pull that out of the Is rack and see. Really? Yeah. Yeah, the, the plus... I thought I'd uh, done that. The HD Pro, um, it'll play back 4K, but not alpha. So... I have one of those as right. well. Right. I have one of those as well. <laughs> okay. I thought I'd done it before, but maybe I haven't. Um, yeah, it does it for... Yeah, it'll do it for HD, but then you go up to 4K and you lose the, the, uh, the fill and key. Uh, okay. So, there you go. Learn something every day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, would, I would have been glad to spend 1000 instead of 1700 <laughs> or whatever it was. <laughs> but... Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand how this is still a thing. I know. Seriously. Uh, why... <laughs> Why has the Smart View monitor not been updated? They especially now they just dropped the price of the um of these uh, of the video, video assists. Assist. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna have a conversation so, like, with some of the people at Black Magic and NAB. <laughs> I would spend I would spend two thousand dollars and like even if it's double the price, like you know, two of them put together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or even better, re- release a version that doesn't have the recording features. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Take take that out. Yeah, we don't I, need it. I don't need I don't need recording in a rack mount monitor. So, because like that price is twelve sixty five. No recording. It's got horrible screens. Mm-hmm. And if you did say two twelve Gs with no recording, I mean I don't know what they've got going on there, but it doesn't seem like that. Yeah, there's... should be hard to do. Yeah. That that might be their oldest product in their lineup at this point. Is it those Smart View? And smart scope monitor. Oh, here's the question. Have we lost now the original gray ATEMs? I would yep. assume so. It's yeah. gone. I would assume so. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah. So we've finally gone to all black yeah. apart from uh, yeah. this guy. <laughs> and then 4K's announced today are direct replacements for the for the two that remained. So well uh, although See, actually the, the broadcast studio, that was a that was a up- upgraded product compared to the production studio because it did 4K 6. Correct. So I actually, uh, I had a client who I bought one for, and, it, and when I bought it, it yeah. was a 2 me. Yeah. And the firmware made it a 4 me, which right. is actually awesome. Right. Um, so I was actually looking at our, the, the reseller stock. Oh, sorry, the distributor stock, and there's still like 16 of them in the country. <laughs> so I'm like, good luck getting rid of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it, 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 it would provide a very unique. They don't have an exact replacement for that. It's like there's no other product that's 4 MEs at 4K at that price point. So. Yes. Yes. So chat, let us know what you're most excited about. What's what's the bit that you're either going to buy, you really want, you really can afford, which is me for all of them. But that's <laughs> yeah. I love to know what uh, yeah. I love to know what you've got there because. So Doug. Yeah. What are you pulling the card out today for and uh, and and getting if anything? Uh, tough to say. Um, the new switchers are intriguing to me, um, mostly because I do like to shoot 4K, you know, and I always feel, yep. I always feel like uh, I'm. Short, shorting myself, shortchanging myself when I buy any sort of HD only equipment. But that said, none of my clients ask for 4K, so I'm able to get by with the HD stuff just fine. So there's no compelling need for me to make that upgrade. Uh, for my trailer, I'm still, I think I'm still probably going to get the 4K 4ME constellation uh, instead of just getting the 2ME, which is a direct replacement for the switcher I'm currently using. So. Uh, but the 120 uh, uh, video hub, that's intriguing. That's interesting. Mm. Um, especially, whoops, especially because um, it's not that much more money than the 80 by 80. So, interesting. Yeah. Uh, the 2110 stuff, now that they're supporting mm. 4K, that's a lot more intri- intriguing than the older HD only. So. And over a 10 gig connection too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I could replace 
my current studio converter slash uh, camera converter stuff with 2110, reuse my existing fiber cables for that and get get 4K functionality that I've never had just because this the camera converter never supported that. So it's a big it would be a big investment because you know I'm 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 getting mm. the one of the eight by converters at a minimum and then so would you do one on each side one in your trailer one on the on the field i don't know um because if, if i want to include intercom which one of the reasons i've used those products in the past that i haven't included intercom uh, that i would have to have the the little the small box at the camera uh, so do you know what is fun actually um you could do all eight cameras over a single strand of fiber. Yeah. Because you just do multiple wavelengths of a 10 gig SFP. Right. And put in a multiplexer and, oh, that's nice. But it's, yeah, yeah. Not necessary in my case because, you know, the fiber trunk that I use is 24 strands. So I've got plenty of, yep. plenty of uh, fiber available. Uh, it is one thing though. So... I've, I've, I've used the same thing, like the 12 multi NTP connectors, and mm -hmm. it's been great. But what I've found is a lot of venues don't have the um, the ability to run a cable from the stage to the uh, where control is. Mm -hmm. um, but they have a couple of LCs kicking around. Yeah. So, yeah, um, you can make that work. Yeah. That would actually be interesting in terms of a, yeah, a stage yeah. box option with... Yeah, it means you're investing in uh, the proper multiplexers and compatible SFPs, which are not they're not, they're not really going to be expensive because they're network instead of video grade, so they're a lot cheaper. Yeah, so exactly. So it'd be it'd be relatively cheap because you can get um, even a, even bi dies as well. So mm -hmm. you can get multi wavelength bi dies, mm -hmm. um, and a yeah cwpm See, that would yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely do the math on that because that could be an interesting like because that could be a good start into 2110 mm -hmm. as i like, use that as a stage box for example and then just kind of go i've got this as a stage box but right. down the track you just go cool i'm just going to plug it into the whole thing the whole thing though is the latency um the stuff i use right now there's zero latency for the fiber conversions yeah and if we go to 2110, I, I assume that they're oh, going to come up with some improvements on that. But right now, the, you know, it looks like most of their stuff is currently two and a half, three frames of latency, which yeah, is a no, it's, lot. It's definitely a big thing. That's a lot. Yeah. I mean, hopefully we'll be surprised and we'll look at it on the show floor and be like, it's down to nothing. <laughs> because I, I saw Redell did a video um, showing off their 2110. They're yeah. like, yeah, it, it, it can a be. A couple of lines. It can be. Yeah, it can be. Just It depends on the implementation. There's no inherent reason yeah. that 2110 has to have a long latency. Just uh, variations in the very individual products. So. Uh, All right. So looking at the looking at chat, we've got people looking forward to. Um, 120 by 120. Ah, oh, Marco, happy birthday! <laughs> this is a pretty good birthday present. Yeah. Going going broke, buying all this equipment. Yeah. Um, still winning the Rackmat 12G Multi Viewer. Mm. Don't we have that? It's 6G. Oh, how about the new one? Is that 12G as well? Multiview? They haven't really, they haven't Oh, sorry, them. sorry. I, I was thinking just a physical screen. Yeah, no, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. The, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, Their multiviewers have not been. Using the EVF as an external monitor for a laptop would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be funny. So you know what? That's not entirely a dumb idea, because <laughs> if you've got, say, a um, a laptop or something as an encoder in a backpack or something, right. being able to just plug in a little viewfinder and see, that's it's not not a crazy idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, micro panel, um, perfect, but we need more IP connections. The ATEM more than seven nine. I want to see what you're doing to have more than seven seven to nine. But I guess the micro panel was nice because if you already have an ATEM software open. You're not using any more connections. Um, and I wonder if you could put mu multiple micro panels in a computer. Hmm. Interesting. 
A lot of the, a lot of those limitations are very on, based on ATEM model of ATEM though. Like the higher yes. end ones yeah, yeah. will handle more. So yeah. I don't actually know what the constellation ones are. I don't either. I've never I've never I run. I think I've reached it once. <laughs> so um, interested in the interoperability of the IP10 codec and the existing UHD2110. Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's probably not going to happen, honestly. Because <laughs> so. yeah, if you're talking into any sort of existing um, IP system, I I want to be wrong, but we'll see. Yeah. I mean, the fact that it's um, a proprietary codec basically means that not, it's not going to work with anybody else's stuff. Unfortunately. One of the best IP videos you don't need to multiplex optics. Um, this is. True. Uh, uh, well, kind of. <laughs> kind of. Kind of. Um, hang on. So the IP. So I'm just com checking the. Um... So what I'm talking about there is the. Uh, so for example, the 2110 8x12G, that's got eight. 10 gig SFP ports rather than a single mm -hmm. uh, 100 gig. So you would have to do some multiplexing kind of thing right. for that if right. you wanted to go along those lines. Yeah, because that's it's a one-to-one -one mapping, right? One of the one SFP port goes to one pair of uh, SDI connections. Yeah. Uh, With the exception uh, of the return video. Return video, you can have a single, single return feed that goes to all the cameras. That you did mention that. So I guess... If that's the case, then, because it is I, IP, so I guess my question is, um, if I bring that back up again, uh, out in and out one and two, one and one, does that only go out port one, or is it just network and it can come out any port? I would, guess for, I would guess for bandwidth reasons, it could could only come out of one port. But if you, uh, if you're shooting HD, perhaps. Well, no, sorry. If if you had five, the eight things plugged in, but you had one cable connected between two of these, you only got to do one at a time. But could you only do one at a time and set different outputs? Obviously, yeah. Bandwidth wise, you can only fit once. But don't know. That'd be interesting to know. Um. So Sam saying, uh, would you need the, the converter with the headphone option for communication? And what cameras do you use? Um. Can you use the Blackmagic Studio cameras and not need those? Yeah. So if you're using a non-Blackmagic camera and you're using the um, essentially channels 15 and 16 on your SDI, right. which I guess you could just embed anyway. Is that what you're doing? You're just embedding on 15 and 16 mm -hmm. for? Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah so I use, in my case, um, I use the existing Studio Converter product. It's got an AES in, and I just uh, got Dante to AES, and that goes up over fiber channel and it's SDI channels 15, 16. For, for comms. Yeah, great. Yep. Nice. So, um, but going back to the question, though, uh, so these devices are for non-Blackmagic cameras uh, in that case, because you know, the, the, with the, the firmware update, the new 4K, 6K Pro are going to support 2110 natively. So... Um, well, in, in the cameras that have those IP, so I've, I've got a bunch of Ursas and mm -hmm. Pockets, so I wouldn't right. be able to use... I, I would be able to use these by dies because I could put an Ursa into that. Right. So that is definitely an option. Yeah. But again, I think latency is going to be the king. If latency is at zero, then this is definitely a viable thing for right. me, but it's yeah. not that. Yeah, but if it's if it's three frames, that's kind, that is kind of a deal killer for me, and I suspect probably you too. Yeah, exactly. Um, Keenan wants the uh, the Pixis. Is that is that how they said it? Pixis PL. Yeah. I have to get used, used to another weird name. Um, we have a bunch of lenses. That's great. Uh, as long as it supports multiple Bluetooth connections, it probably will. Yeah, I, it. It'd be nice if it does, because that'd be great to have a couple of panels in front of people that need it. Um, oh, Marco's saying we have two panels, two CCUs, one tally interface, one to two PC softwares, APCR, um, and one companion server. Yeah, okay, that's. That's uh, a decent amount. Love to see that set up. That looks awesome. Um, Twenty one ten stuff for me is very interesting. To uh, we'd love to. S 
make these devices IPMX capable to make them more versatile. Hmm. Yeah. I think it's literally just mapped maybe in software. I'm surprised nobody said NDI. It should be NDI. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, actually. Um, yeah, look, I, we've always said this. I don't think NDI is ever going to happen in Black Magic World. No, but no, 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 no. no. The licenses are too expensive. They would, they would never pay for it. Yeah. So. But the funny thing is, though, is that NDI is currently winning in terms of latency versus 2110 in this scenario. That's more a matter of maturity than anything else, I'm sure. So. Yeah. NDI full frame is apparently a dying breed. I don't know if... Well... So, for me, HX, the latency is too high. It's the same problem. And um, I was on a... Too, noticeable quality loss with HX. Yeah. Uh, I was on a job recently. We're doing downhill mountain biking, and we have guys going you know, 60 miles an hour past the camera and I was doing pan tilt cameras from the truck. So by the time I see them enter the frame, I was using HX1 um, going, it was funny, so it was Canon uh, N700 cameras, IP straight out of that, fiber down to the base, went to a Magewell converter, went SDI into a IP2110 truck and then went to our monitors. So we went from NDI to SDI to IP to... I guess HDMI on my monitor. So it was just all the conversions. Um, but I had to watch so closely because as soon as I saw them enter the frame, I had to press the button to go because otherwise they were gone. Like, and that was only three, four frames worth of delay, but it was... It's enough. It's enough to cause an issue for that. Yeah. Um, so that, I wish it was full NDI because the latency on that is a lot better. Um, but... Yeah, there's still some, but it's much better. Yeah, latency decode, decode cycles take too long on HX, I agree. It's just... Yep. Yeah. It's, I think it's, it's, uh, it's NDI is far less... Yeah. I mean, depends who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, NDI, NDI fanboys are going to say it's more flexible. But that's, exactly. That's more, Dante AB. That comes down to more a misunderstanding of how 2110 yeah. works than anything else. 2110 ultimately is going to have a lot more capabilities. So. 100%. Dante AV, tough to say. We don't know. We don't know yet. Um, For me, it's too expensive. Yeah. Like, all the converters cost a lot of money. It's, um, I want it to work, because then you could talk with Dante and everything, all happy family and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, most converters are like $3,000 starting there. Yeah. And that's yeah. a lot of money. They will definitely have to fix that before it's going to catch on. So, yeah, I mean the big thing um, 2110 has going for it is the licensing cost is basically zero. So, yeah, um, even bird dogs move away from full frame. Um, the announcements today were HX only. Oh, I haven't actually seen what the bird dog announcements were. Um, yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah, I, I know how I know how you feel about bird dog products too. So. <laughs> I know I shouldn't badmouth a fellow Australian <laughs> company, but um, I'm sorry. But make something that works. And I know we're talking about Black Magic here, and some would say that I should be talking yeah, about them too. But uh... you ask, right? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. This has been fun. For sure. Yeah. I, I had no yeah. idea we had so many products incoming. That was. Uh... <laughs> Definitely felt bombarded there for the first, what, hour of the stream? And just new product every two minutes or however that worked out. So, I uh, think they're going to need uh, a bigger booth. <laughs> yeah. We're going to need a bigger booth. <laughs> so, We're going to need a bigger booth. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely a lot to see. Uh, did, did you uh, get scheduled with uh, Blackmagic to, to talk to one of their reps? Uh, yes, I've okay. um, chatting with some on the Monday, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, as well. So I didn't know that it was going to be same... so exciting. So that, this, that, that that meeting is going to be a lot more interesting than I had, had anticipated it might be. So. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, actually, for for the viewers here, what do you want to see from NAB? So I've got a I've got my little backpack packed and ready to go with the camera. So. If you want to see any particular products, let us know because we'll be around with cameras and hopefully making some content. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah. 
and this will definitely be the last stream before NAB. So this is the last chance to get get your uh, get your vote in for what you want us to see us cover. <laughs> Oh, so you haven't seen the announcement in length yet because it's your birthday. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> but I thought this this was your birthday present. This is what what more could you want? <laughs> yeah. Definitely the biggest birthday present Black Magic Black Magic has ever given, that's for sure. So Yeah. All right. Well, uh, any other last questions popping in? Uh, otherwise, uh No, I mean that's that's basically up, it so. for from the chat point of view. Um Yeah, Doug, thanks for joining. Um, when you yeah. texted me going, hey, do you want to do this together? I'm like, that makes a whole bunch of sense. Because yeah. um, otherwise, otherwise yeah. we're competing is... against each other and there's no need to do that. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This will get uh, you in front of more eyeballs on my channel and vice versa. So, Yeah, like, likewise. So make sure you subscribe to the, the other yeah. thing and Both all ways. that fun stuff. Yeah. And... So of all the people who are doing uh, this sort of content on YouTube, Ryan is the most like my channel of any that are out there. So, And likewise. Yep. <laughs> right back at you. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, hopefully, we'll see some of you at NAB. Um, there's a... Doug, are you going to the, uh, the meetup yep. on... Yeah. Monday at 4 o'clock. Monday? Yep. Monday, 4 o'clock at the front in probably one of the tents. I haven't, I haven't seen it yet, but yeah. we'll, there's, we'll find there's, a table out there just to chill out. There's a Facebook group. For, uh, any, for more information on yep. that, um, I'll have to get that linked. But, yeah, check my Facebook or Zephyr's Facebook. Um, that should all be there. It's it's very very chill, but we just want to hang out and have a good chat. That's, no, we, did, we did it last no, year. No it was agenda. A lot of fun. We just sit around and talk to each other for yeah. a while. So yeah. we just talk shop and uh, spend way too much money. It's great. Yeah. So a lot of fun. Cool. Yeah, if you, if, if you guys well, I look forward to seeing you and, and, and see see any see me, come and say hi. I'm sure Ryan would say the same thing. Likewise, just, yeah. Uh, it's always nice to meet the people who are watching the channel and put faces to names and interact with them. Hundred so. percent. We see names fly out through the chat, and we're like, oh yeah, that that's you. That's mm -hmm. yeah. It's really. Yeah. Good. Um, have a link to throw up his channel, Doug. Um, oh, sorry, I thought that was for Doug's channel. Uh, we can put in each other's yep. links into each other's chats. Yeah, but yeah. So mine is uh, youtube.com slash at djp underscore video. Yep, and I'll just put that into my chat, so make sure you subscribe there, and I'll put it into Doug's chat also, which I think is that one. Anyway, yeah. Cool. It's now uh, six twelve a.m., so it's a <laughs> bit more of a reasonable time. But uh, Time to finally wake up. The sun's coming up. So. Yeah, it's time to wake up. My uh, daughter will wake up soon, I'm sure. So um, yeah. I'll have to deal with all that and jump on a plane in about 12, 11 hours time. So fine. Yeah, it's only a five hour and deal drive with a. Me, uh, so so I, I'm I'm not even driving down until Sunday afternoon. So. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So I'll make sure to get all the goss on the on the Sunday then. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, Doug. This has been yeah. fun. Yeah. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks for joining. This. this Probably the first time you've actually been on my channel directly, isn't it? So, we've, yeah, you and I have interacted quite yeah. a lot, but but I think it's probably the type first. We, we should we should do this more often. This For is sure. um this has been fun. For sure, absolutely. Yeah, that'd be that would be awesome. Yeah. So, alrighty. Well, so thanks everybody for watching, and um, yeah, uh, we'll see you at NAB if you happen to be there. So. Awesome. Alrighty. Bye. Thanks. See ya.